Hello and welcome to the Creatures of the Deep workshop. My name is Joseph Orr, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own short monster animation. This workshop was inspired by Dunleary Harbour, the ocean, and a love of monster movies. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own terrifying sea creature, complete with an ocean set and a small boat for it to eat. Everything will be made using simple arts and crafts materials, but before we get into that, let's take a look at a finished example. Now this is just one that I've made that I'll be using as a reference throughout the workshop. So that is what we're aiming to make today. Now you can make your own sea creature if you wish. You do not have to base it on my design. But if drawing's not your thing, I've also included a PDF template that you can download and use if you wish. So let's get into it and take a look at the materials we're going to need. Some plain card of any thickness, whichever you can get your hands on. You also need some colored card if possible. Now, if not, we can always use markers to color in the plain card, but these are great for the blue waves. We'll also need some blue tack. This is crucial for holding everything together. When it comes to the coloring, my preference is normally paint, but you could use markers or coloring pencils if you'd prefer. You'll also need a ruler, pencil, and rubber. This is for drawing everything out and just correcting any mistakes you might make. Some Lego blocks are great for holding up not only your phone, but some characters too. But if you don't have that, like I'll show you later on, you can use books to brace your camera and even some of the smaller characters. A large white piece of paper or card is perfect for a backdrop. Now, if you don't have a large sheet, you could just use a blank wall. Just push your animation up against the wall in your house, whether it's blue or white, and that'll work. Um, some PVA glue for sticking things down together. Some scissors for cutting things out. And don't be afraid to ask for help if you need to with some of the smaller, finer details. A phone or a tablet, and this will be for downloading the app to take the photos on and do the animation. And the app itself is Stop Motion Studio. And the blue one is the free one. There is a paid version that's kind of pink or purple, but you want to go for the blue one because that's free. And last but not least, a small desk lamp. So I've used this one from Ikea. You can use any kind of desk lamp. It's just to help control the lighting. Ideally, you want to set up in a fairly dark room, a place where you could maybe pull the curtains and stay away from direct daylight because that'll cause flickering. And if you have a lamp, it just means you can control the light a little bit better. I will mention this a couple of times throughout the workshop, but if at any stage you need to pause, rewind and play again, please do. Whether it's to take a break, gather some materials or just work on your own sea creature design. Take your time and find a pace that suits you. So next we move on to set building and character design. Now I'm going to start with the waves and to judge the height of them, if you lay the phone or tablet you're going to use beside them and mark out where the camera is on your sheet, this will help for judging the size that the wave should be because you want them in the shot but not completely blocking everything. Like you can see in my example here, you want enough space to hide the movement of the boat, but also that the sea creature can rest below to pop up. And once you've ruled out a guideline, you can start to draw your waves. These actually look better if they're not all the same, so some can kind of sink slightly lower than before. And then using a scissors, take care to cut them out on the curves. And this can take a bit of time, but the smoother you get them, the nicer they'll look in the finished shot. And here are the two different shades of blue that I'll be using. One is slightly bigger than the other, but you'll find you'll have to trim a little bit off each when it comes to setting up the animation. Sometimes they can still be blocking the shot that little bit too much, but I'll show you that later on. And the final part of the set is the two piers and lighthouses. Now these are just two separate bits of card, two pieces for the lighthouses and two pieces for the pier. I've drawn them and then glued them to the back to hide the kind of pencil work. And you can see when I put them in the background, they look nice and far and in the distance. And you don't have to cut these sections out using separate card. You could draw them on your background too, if that was easier. So now we move on to drawing the sea creature in the boat. I start with some very light guide shapes. So these are here just to give a sense of the shape of the creature. I'm not going too hard because I know I'll be rubbing out these lines later. My sea creature is kind of based on a Loch Ness monster type creature. So that kind of head and serpent like body. So I'm just kind of roughing this out at the moment. Um, and I'm drawing the top portion of the head and neck separate. So if you think of the lower mouth where the jaw would be, that's going to be a separate part. 
So at the moment, I'm just focused on the top of the head. And I'll draw in some teeth later as a reference point. But at the moment, here now, I'm working on the lower jaw. And I want my monster's jaw to stick out further at the bottom so that his jaw um, is larger than the one on top. So I'm drawing this quite a good bit bigger just to give me room. Always a good tip to draw it a bit bigger than you need it because you can always cut it down to size later. But if you draw it too small, cut it out like that, um, it's difficult then. You kind of have to just go back and start again. So next I'm going to work on the middle section. And you can see I'm doing these in kind of like a an outward cone shape. So again, you can draw more than you need because you want these parts to overlap. You want to be able to blue tack them together and kind of support each other. And then this final one will be the biggest piece on the bottom. So again, I start quite narrow at the top and draw down and kind of give it a nice curve at the bottom. So always draw more than you need would be my main tip here because once you cut them out, we can trim it down later. Um, but start with nice big shapes. And then I'm just going to draw out the boat. So very simple fishing boat is what I've gone for. Again, you might have a different design for a boat you'd like to use and that's absolutely fine. And it's a good tip to draw the boat on the same sheet as the monster because that way you can keep it in the same proportions. So I want the boat to be a little bit smaller than the creature's head so that it's believable when the creature swoops down to eat it during the animation. So you're kind of using the head as a reference point as you go. Now remember, if drawing isn't your thing, I've included a downloadable template for the monster that I've made, which you can download, print out, and use that. Um, I would encourage you to design your own monster, either based on mine or something completely different, but just so you know that that's there as an option. So once you're finished drawing the basic shape of the monster, we can start to cut it out. Now remember, the teeth and fins that we add in They'll be done on separate card and glued in later. For the moment, we're just working with the basic shape of the monster. So take care of cutting these out. And when you're finished, you should end up with six pieces that look something like this. And now I'm going to assemble them just to give you an idea of what the finished monster should look like. So the head and finally the lower jaw is the last piece to go on. So it looks something like that. And if this workshop is moving a little fast, don't forget that you can pause, rewind and play it at any stage. Move at a pace that suits you and when you're ready, come back to it. So here we have the four pieces of our sea creature. Now I'm going to use some scrap card to draw the teeth with. It's important to leave a little bit of room at the bottom because this is going to stick behind the jaw piece. So I'm just going to draw a few jagged teeth, join them up together and then I'm going to kind of draw out the lines for where I'll cut out. And you want to hide this behind it. So there it is cut out. And you can see when I hold it, it fits neatly behind it. I'm going to do the same with the top half. I draw a little guide for where the mouth kind of ends because you don't want the teeth support behind sticking out. So it's nice to have a little rough guide so you know where to hide it behind. And again, I cut that out and I'll hold it behind it just to show. And I'll glue that on later. Now we move on to the fins. Because it's a sea creature, I wanted to give it that kind of webbed Loch Ness kind of look. So I'm going to draw out the spikes first and then join them together using kind of curves. And again, these are just rough guides, so I'm doing them lightly. And I will cut it out and see does it fit by holding the head over it. And I'll do the same for the other two sections, the middle and the end. Again, I'm just drawing out long spikes, joining them together with curves. And I cut out a little bit more than I need because I need it to stick behind the main body of the sea creature. So again, just drawing out those spikes. Now, if you wanted to do more curves, you could, or less, it's completely up to you. That's just the style I've gone with. So next we move on to our PVA glue. Now, I like to use as little as possible. If you use too much, it's gonna warp the card. So I place the teeth down first, line up the mouth on top, and then press firmly together. And I'm gonna do the same with the top half as well. Now, if you wanna leave these under a book for a little bit, just to make sure they, they stick completely, that's fine too. Then we move on to the water fins. Again, using very minimal amount of glue, I put that down first and place the head on top of it and just press firmly along the edges to make sure it's properly stuck down. And here we get a little preview of the jaw movement. So I'm gonna place that aside and do the rest of my water fins. Again, place that down, put the body on top of it and press firmly just to make sure it's stuck. 
Now, if you don't have PVA glue, you could use blue tack here as well. Uh, I find Prit stick doesn't work as well. It doesn't keep them stuck, but PVA glue would be best, but blue tack is a good backup if you need it. And now I'll just line these up to look at the finished product. And then I've just really quickly cut out the boat and the back support for the fishing trawler. I actually found it was a little too big when I drew it first, so I trimmed it down a little bit more. And then comes the erasing of the guidelines. So you just wanna go along and get rid of any pencil marks that you're not gonna need, because you're gonna to wanna to paint or color it, and these are just gonna get in the way. Then finally, I draw out the mark for the belly. So this is gonna be a slightly lighter shade than the creature, just to give the impression that it's a, it's a 3D object. Now, if you have really thin card like I do, I'm going to use coloring pencils on this particular one. If you use paint on a really thin card, it's just going to warp it and bend it and it's hard to animate with. So if you have thicker card and you'd like to use paint, I do prefer using paint. It gives it kind of a nice smoother finish, but you can see the coloring pencils work well too. It gives it a kind of a nicely different texture. And whatever color you decide to paint your sea creature or color it in, just make sure you have two different shades, one light for the belly and a kind of a darker shade for the actual body. And then I'm just going to go with a light pink for the fins. Again, you could have chosen any color here. Blue could have worked, yellow even perhaps. So I'll leave that completely up to you. And then the fishing boat, just to make it stand out a bit, I've gone with kind of a dark green and a light green for the window. And here you can see the two comparisons. Now, in comparison, the paint does give you a better finish, um, but that's only because I had thicker card available. If you only have thin card like the one on the left, I would recommend sticking to coloring pencils or markers. Let's take a look at setting up the shot. So for this example, I'm using a Lego base plate, a desk lamp, some white card for the background, but you could use paper, and then some bricks to hold the phone up. I've left the bricks two studs apart to leave space for my phone, and I make sure that the camera is up the top. So when you're lying it down, the camera should be up higher, not close to the ground. And I use a bit of blue tack to secure it in place, just so that when I'm taking photos, it won't wobble. I do the same with the Lego base plate. And it's always a good idea to just blue tack the things down that you don't want to move. And then you're ready to start taking photos. Now, if you don't have Lego, here's an alternative setup using books. Again, the same principle. I'm going to have the camera up top. I'm going to get a small book so that I can brace the phone against it. You can only see a tiny bit of that book at the bottom, but we'll get rid of that after. And I use two bigger books on the sides to help brace it in so that it won't move. And to hide the book, I've cut out a simple piece of card, wave shape, blue tacked it down, and then the boat sits nicely behind it and the book is hidden. And you're now ready to animate. So the app we're going to be using is called Stop Motion Studio. There's a free version with the blue icon that looks like this. When you open up the app, you can click on the plus button to start a new movie. A few ads will pop up and you can click anywhere on the screen just to close them down. I'm going to start with the waves, which I have blue tacked to a few Lego bricks. Again, you could use anything, a small toy, anything that will help stand it up. And don't forget, your waves might be too big when you place them in the shot first. If this happens, just trim a little bit off the bottom using your ruler and scissors and then place it back in until you find a height you're happy with. And then I add the second sheet of waves into the middle. So this should all be perfectly hiding the boat. And you can see that this is balanced on some Lego bricks with some blue tack. And it did take me a while to find the perfect height. So sometimes the boat might be sitting a bit too low. And then again, sometimes it's too high. So depending on how high your waves are, it might take you a little bit to find the right height. Now I'm using the edge of the green base plate to keep the boat straight. You might blue tack down the ruler or something with a straight edge just to keep that in line. And then lastly, I'm adding in the two lighthouses on the pier wall. Now you could blue tack these to the back wall on your white sheet if you wished, whichever you find easier. Now we're gonna set the FPS or frames per second using this cog. FPS controls the speed of your animation. It stands for frames per second. The lower the number, the slower your animation will play back. If you're new to animating, I would recommend starting at somewhere between 4 to 6 FPS. Now I animate at 12 frames per second, but you find a number that's comfortable for you and then click done. And remember, you can always come back later and change this depending on how fast or slow your animation is playing back. Next, we're going to click on this camera icon and then down the bottom right, the three lines. So we go over to the M for choosing a mode and then the bigger M down the bottom right is for manual and this will give us full control over all options. Now you don't have to go to manual mode. Some people prefer to stick with auto because it looks after all these settings, 
But one thing about auto is the lighting will adjust depending on what you have in the shot. For instance, when I had it on auto and brought the sea creature in, the lighting became very yellowish. Now, if that's something that would annoy you, I'd recommend sticking with manual. This first one is white balance. And you'll see that the most of the options are kind of an orangey yellow, whereas I prefer just the plain clear blue one. This icon here is focus. It's really important to set your focus before you start to animate. Adjust the slider left and right until the monster seems clear in the shot. The next option beside focus is for brightness. Now, I think the shot is quite bright as it is, but you can higher it up or lower it down depending on what your shot looks like. And then when you're finished, click done. Now I'm going to take my monster out because he's not at the start of the film, move the boat out of shot and use that red button to take 10 blank photos. The number down the bottom right will tell you how many photos you've taken. Now comes the animating. I start by moving the boat a tiny bit into shot and taking a photo. Then I move it a tiny bit more and take another photo. And this process simply repeats over and over. Now I'm using the green studs on the base plate as a guide to help keep my movements consistent. This is really important for achieving smooth animation, but you could also use a ruler to do this, just blue tack down to the surface. As I speed up the playback, you may notice the ghost-like image around the boat. This is called onion skin, and it is controlled by this slider here on the left. Onion skin allows you to see both the current and previous image, and is very handy when it comes to animating. Now you can keep it off and turn it on when you need it, or have it on the whole time, whatever works best for you. Once you've taken a few photos, you may wish to watch back what you've done so far. You can do this by hitting the play button. It's always a good idea to watch your animations back while you work on them. That way you can make adjustments as you go. When the boat gets halfway across the screen, it's time to bring in your sea creature. Now remember, the simplest way to put your creature together is using blue tack. I use three pieces. One for the jaw, placed just below the eye. Put the lower mouth on top and press firmly. This will keep it in place, but also allow you to move the mouth open and closed. Next, I place a piece of blue tack at the top of the middle section. Grab the headpiece and press firmly again, and then repeat for the last section. Now your creature should hold together firmly. So we start with just the top section, the head and the neck, which I've blue tacked to a piece of Lego. You want to give the impression it is rising from the ocean. Take a photo and then make sure to move the boat a little first. The boat won't come to a full stop till the creature is further out of the water. Now take the creature's head and move it further up the Lego bricks or whatever support you are using and take a photo. Again, I'll play it back to see how the creature is progressing. Happy with that, I'll move the boat first and then raise the creature up a little bit more. This process repeats until the creature is at its full height out of the water, adding the additional pieces to the creature as we go. The most important thing is to keep the supports hidden and use blue tack to hold the creature together. To get nice smooth animation, you want to move the creature at first using big movements, but as you get closer to the top, you move it smaller and smaller amounts. That final movement should be very slight so as to give the creature a nice smooth stop. Once it has reached its full height, take another 9 to 10 photos to give the creature that pause before it attacks. Now begins the mouth movement of the creature, with the boat staying perfectly still. Don't worry if the creature comes loose while you animate. You may have to occasionally repress the blue tack in just to keep it together. However, when I get to this point, I realize I want to delete this last photo. If this happens, click on this arrow and scroll to the photo you wish to delete. Tap once on the clip and click delete. Now click on the camera icon to return to animation mode. The aim is to keep the opening of the mouth moving towards the boat so it closes around it. The trick is to have the sea creature closer to the camera than the boat so it passes in front of it giving the illusion that it's eating the boat. Now sometimes you need to take a photo to realize it's wrong. So again, I'll click back, cycle through the photos to examine the movement. I realize the bite is almost missing the boat, so I'm going to delete it and go back to animation mode. Now I reposition the mouth so the boat is in the middle of it. Remember the mouth is in front of the boat, so it's not actually closing around it, it's just the illusion of it. And when the boat is almost completely covered, you can take it out of the shot. Then it's just a case of lowering the creature eventually out of shot, Make sure to remove the support and take 10 blank photos. Now click play and watch the full thing back. And there you have it. You have now successfully animated your Creature of the Deep. Remember you can change the speed of the playback using the settings cog by adjusting the FPS. Once you are done, simply click the back arrow at the top left to save your project.
Well, that is it for the Creatures of the Deep workshop. I hope you had fun. And if you have any follow-up questions, you can find me online at Speak Broccoli on Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. Just look for the green broccoli logo. I post a lot of making of and tutorials to do with animation, so hopefully there's something in there that can help you. But thank you very much for joining me and enjoy the rest of your day.